press the record button. Um, so if you um, don't want to appear on our recording on our YouTube channel, please turn off your camera um, because, because you may appear. But I'm going to start by saying welcome, um, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us on this very blustery last day of January. We're delighted to coming? welcome Phoebe Osborne today, who's the creator of an app called My Sound Stories. Uh, Phoebe is a speech and language therapist, and she's also been involved in creating accessible music workshops for a number of years so we're really looking forward to finding out more about the app from Phoebe um, and seeing how it all work, works so I'm going to hand over to Phoebe just now um, who's going to share our screen I think as well thanks very much Phoebe welcome thank you so much Claire just going to share my screen with you guys yeah thank you for joining me so my name's Phoebe Osborne and I'm the creator of My Sound Stories, which is an interactive music and story app that supports children's listening, speech, language, reading and creativity. It's beneficial and fun for all children, and especially for deaf children or children with speech and language communication needs. Children can explore stories brought to life with illustrations, sounds, music, voices and sound language. So who are we? Claire, you just gave me a lovely introduction. Um, I'm a speech and language therapist working in deafness um, in the borough of Tower Hamlets in London and I'm also a composer and a musician and I've got about 16 years experience facilitating music sessions with a range of children and adults and especially deaf children. Um, I set up the community interest company Sound Stories in 2022 and partnered with Creative Futures to create the My Sound Stories app. Creative Futures is a multi-arts charity which offers transformative experiences through the arts for children, particularly those from disadvantaged backgrounds and in areas of social economic deprivation. They have a track record of creating and delivering projects that target speech and language and communication needs creatively through the arts and music. And they've got they, they've got lots of evidence around um, significant changes through the projects that they run. Um, thank you very much to our funders, Kasuma Trust and Clifford Chance Foundation, who made this app possible. And we worked with about 23 creatives um, in a freelance basis who are all based in the UK. Um, and these include composers, musicians, creative writers, illustrators, sound designers, an app designer, narrators, BSL interpreters. There was a lot of coordination in the making of this app. So why use an app? I am probably preaching to the converted here, given that you're all here today. But um, in today's digital age, specialised resources for speech and language therapy are not just a convenience, they are a necessity. And the lack of such resources during the pandemic was really evident. So trying to do remote work with children with speech and language and communication needs and trying to give families the resources that they need so that they had easy access was really, really difficult. And so lots of you have got similar experience since we're trying to work with families over the, the pandemic and just things not being interactive and things being very paper based. I think it's been hours trying to uh, manipulate PDFs. <laughs> um, so this is a free resource and it addresses budget shortages within speech and language therapy, as well as sometimes exclusionary approaches to arts and culture. So you might have a weekly music session, which is brilliant, but you not all children might be able to access it um, or the schools might not be able to afford it. So sometimes it can be quite exclusionary. Um, when we were conducting the the needs analysis for this app, we so it was during the pandemic, and we found that at least 25% of children under five years have speech and language and communication needs, rising to 50% in areas of socio-economic deprivation. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to talk much about that because I'm sure you all are very aware of the need. Um, so the benefits of my sound stories. So one of the core benefits is its targeted approach to improving speech, language and communication skills for children aged three to eight. It's especially impactful for deaf children um, and children with SLCN. Although it's not designed for reading, it will definitely help with this. Um, the app is a playground for sound exploration and auditory discrimination. 
key building blocks in developing robust oral perception and the processing systems behind that. And it's important, really important, those skills, the, the, the foundations for language skills. It introduces new vocabulary in the form of spoken English, written English, and also with BSL videos and gives stories where deaf children and children with speech and language and communication needs, they are the protagonists. And all of the stories are really relatable to those children and their families. My Sound Stories is designed to empower children to create and personalise learning journeys, which will boost their confidence to make choices and explore sounds and stories in a safe, playful environment. So whether they use the app independently or with guidance from adults, the app provides a rich tapestry of different sounds, both environmental and creative sounds, coupled with music and visuals and BSL sign videos to engage children in a multi-sensory learning experience. It's a little bit on our user engagement and reach. Since its launch 13 months ago, My Sound Stories has achieved significant reach with 5,700 downloads across Apple and Android devices. While the majority of our users are based in the UK, we're also seeing growing usage in the US, Canada, Australia and Italy, even though the app is in English and the, the signing is BSL. Um, the way that it was developed was very much in consultation um, with, we, we created this um, with an advisory board. So it involved a collaborative and user-centered approach. So the advisory board consisted of experts in speech and language therapy, music and deafness, teachers of the deaf, early childhood education, digital learning. So they were all consulted throughout the development process. And then we also did extensive testing with parents and their children from a number of different schools, which gave us real world insights into the app's usability and effectiveness. Feedback from these test sessions really helped in refining the app, making it more intuitive and engaging. So the thing that's different about this app is its unique user experience. So My Sound Stories adapts to each child's unique needs, facilitating a tailored experience. Whether it's Lucy, who's learning a new BSL vocabulary with her mum, and she's watching all of the different BSL videos, and then she's reading the words that go along with it with her mum, and then copying the signs. Or maybe it's Hassan, who's exploring emotions and listening and copying the sounds that go with them with his speech and language therapist. Maybe they're in school in a small group. Or maybe it's Tom, who's recording his own sound effects to his favourite page in the story independently. I'm just going to talk a bit about the features, but we will have a real life demo after. So you'll, you'll see some of these features and accessibilities. Um, so my favourite thing about it is that you can choose to just have picture or you can have BSL videos, you can have text, you can have the narration um, and or you can have a co different combination of those things. There are three levels of interaction. So with the sounds, you can either explore the sounds assigned to the story without any choices, a combination of creative sounds and environmental sounds or composed music. So we've got a huge range of sounds and music here. Um, you can then change it in the settings so that you have a choice of three different sounds and then you choose the sound which you think matches the picture best. Or you don't and choose a silly sound which doesn't match the picture, which can be equally as fun. Um, and then the third level is you can record your own sound or your music to go with the picture. Um, within the accessibility features, you've got haptic feedback that happens throughout the, um, the experience. You've got an option to have higher or lower sensitivity. You've got different ways to trigger the sounds, which are wait for the last sound to finish. You can interrupt the sound or you can overlay the sound, which gives, yeah, Either, either it can be accessibility or it can be different stages of using the app. Once you've tried one setting, you can try a different setting. So as part of the funding for this app, we had an external evaluation um, drawn out, which was great. 
the evaluation report for My Sound Stories, based on feedback from families and practitioners, revealed strong usability and engagement. It's noted for its capability to support listening skills and provide a shared learning experience for children and adults. Um, and the report recognised the potential to support, support speech and language and communication. Um, the report also highlights the app's impact on encouraging imaginative storytelling and the importance of continued support for users to maximise the app's benefits. Um, so we are very happy with the app, but obviously we can always have improvements. And so these are some of the things that we would like to do in the future. Um, so we would love to create how-to videos which would explain the navigation of the app a little bit more. It would also explain the accessibility features and then give ideas of how to use the app because um, there's so many different ways that children can use it. It would be great to yeah, just, just have some, some um, ideas, but in video form that's easy to access. Um, and also emphasising the way that adults can interact with the child. Um, we would love to put some new stories on there, especially some early years stories that are maybe quite short and yeah, maybe some simple vocabulary with simplified sound and maybe explore some of the visual cues that go with the sound identification. In terms of accessibility, we, we, we would love it for the BSL videos to be adjustable and same with the font sizes. Um, we'd love to have a middle step so that there's a choice of two instead of none or three. Um, and then, then there's some new features, which would also be great. Um, so when the narration is playing, it would be really great if the text could be highlighted so that you can see the different words, which I think would make a big difference for the reading um, aspect of it. It would also be great to have an automatic playback. Um, so with chosen sounds to streamline the sort of storytelling experience. Um, and then other things like auditory cues for page turnings and starting up music are just the icing on the cake. Um, so hopefully um, this presentation has provided a comprehensive view of the app and its benefits and the positive impact based on external evaluation and from feedback we've had whilst people have been using the app and also the commitment to continual improvement. Um, Thank you very much. And I'm going to do a real time. Um, a real time demo. So let me. Put this on to the right mode. It should work. It was working a second ago. That's working. Sorry, guys. Just going to start up quick time again. This is what always happens, isn't it? In the tech re rehearsal, it's fine. And then it's saying unable to connect. I have no idea why. Don't worry, Phoebe, this always happens, as you say, whenever whenever you try and do it live. We have a plan B. If you want me to share it from my end and you tell me which bits to press, just shout and we can do that. Don't know if you want to try rebooting it maybe oh, again. Oh, it's and doing it. Is it doing it then? Fantastic. Working, working now. OK. If you just share oh. your screen as well, Phoebe. That's yeah, okay. no, I'm, yeah. I'm going to now. <laughs> I'm just checking that it was going to work. OK, sound screen. Let's get this working. Oh. 
OK. Can you see that? Perfect. Yes. Great. Yes. OK, brilliant. So here's our little logo here. Little book singing and it takes us straight through to the different books. We've only got two toggles at the bottom, which is home and then settings. At the top, it just gives us a bit about my son's stories and, and it links to the website at the bottom, which is where you can get more information and look at some videos. How to use this app. Again, it just tells us a little bit about the different levels of interacting with sounds, which I'm going to run you through now. The sensitivity, how sounds play. So it just tells us a little bit about the settings and then you've got settings here. So let's start with no sound choices, not allowed in, not allow recording sounds and let's have wait for the last sound to finish, which is a nice place to start to start. So. There's roughly two levels of. Um, of books here, so Ling Ling Bird, some of you might already know it was adapted for this app. Um, by Tanya Sanders. It tells us a little bit about it there and also what level it is. So developing early early listening, everyday vocab and easy storyline. And then we can go into the app. And on the bottom here, you've got the text, which you can get rid of if you want. You've got the signing video. And then you've got narration. Ling Ling Bird hears with his magic ears. And then when you click on this big circle in the middle, it's a big blue circle, which means it's music. And you've got a little bit of an animation and you've got a flute here, but there's loads of different real instruments embedded into the app. Same thing here. You could get rid of the BSL if you wanted. You could just have the narration. Bird has magic ears. They help him to hear. Listen, he likes. And then here is slightly different. You've got a white circle, which means it's going to be an environmental sound, which just means it's going to be representative of the picture. And then you could read. You could look at the sign language. And you can listen to the narration. Buzzy bees. Bzz, bzz. So that's kind of our level one, what you might want to do if you're just introducing a child to the app or if you're working with a very young child. Um, then I'm going to go back to settings. I'm going to show a choice of sound and just to show you the different ways it works, we're going to go to interrupt the last sound. And let's go to a different story. So you can go back to the place you left off. I'm going to start again. Again, we've got the BSL. Miss Hewitt was talking about how mountains grow. Kemi didn't understand. And there was a fly in the room flying round and round. And then you've got these two white circles here, so I'm going to click there. And this time it gives you a choice of three. Blah, it... blah, blah. So you can see I can interrupt these sounds as well. And I think the middle one is most representative of the picture, so I'm going to choose that. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to save it. So then when blah, you blah, click blah. the picture, it you give a little, little bit of an animation um, so you can see what sound goes where. Um, I'm going to do the same for the fly. Not that one. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm going to choose the fly. OK, now I'm going to go out of this and choose the last setting, which I think is my favourite thing about the app. And I think the thing that sets it apart from other kind of story apps that are out there. Um, so I'm going to overlap and I've allowed recording sounds. I'm going to go back and back to the story, back to Green Calm. And let's find some music so I can show this. Yeah. So here. Might want to look at the video. Everyone stared, but he didn't know what to say. Kemi felt hot. Then Kemi felt angry, red angry. And then I can click on here and I can listen to these different sounds. <laughs> Oh, 
Mm. And so you can see how all the sounds overlay over each other. But actually, I don't like any of that music and I want to make my own sounds. So I'm going to make an angry sound. Ah! Ah! And I'm going to save that here. Ah! So you can see um, it really is my sound story now. <laughs> Definitely not got anybody else's voice on that. Um, yeah, so that should give you a good understanding of the different ways that you can interact with the app. We've got two more stories on here at the moment, Jasper's Tail and Firebird. Um, yeah, and Jasper's Tail, the, the dog is deaf. Um, Green Calm, the uh, young boy who's in it doesn't understand what's going on in class. Ling Ling Bird is a bird that is deaf and is learning to listen to sounds for the first time. Um, yeah, so here is the app. I'm just going to stop sharing. Um, and I was going to show you very quickly a little video of some children interacting with it. To finish up. See if I can do it. <laughs> so here you go. Ignore the pink hair. My sound stories is I'm just gonna flick to the bit where the kids are in it. Language and creativity. is beneficial and fun. I'm going to go as well to here. You've heard me talking. Um, the best bit you get to record, um, you can read the story, then you can record each sound of the pictures, and then it copies your sound. Using sign language as she read the book. So then like sign language, and then um, I want to use a sign language in case I have like other sign um, people who can't speak but use sign language. If they know sign language, we can do them. That's it. There's, I think we've got a little bit of time for some questions, if anyone's got a question. Brilliant. Right, Phoebe, that was fantastic. What a great overview of all the features. If anyone does have a question, mm. you can either type it into the chat at the side or put your hand up or turn your mic microphone on um, and ask Phoebe directly. Um, it was just, I just absolutely love that multimodal communication approach you've got in the app. You've got the, you, the BSL and the text and the sound effects. It's lovely. And I really like the way when the sound effects are playing, you get that visual cue with them tracking across the, the sound as well. It's really, really nice. Um, yeah, so th thank you very much for, for showing us um, everything today. Those... Um, those developments that you were talking about, the things that you would like to do to the app, is th is there a plan? Is there a time scale for that? Or is it more of a, if we're able to get the funding together in an ideal world, this is what we'd like to do? So I'm going to be recording some how-to videos. Anyway, that's, that's um, going to happen in the very near future. Um, and they're going to be available on the website. The other things um, we currently have a funding bid and we're waiting we're waiting um to find out if it's successful or not and so some of those things will be addressed um yeah i'm not sure how many of them we're going to be able to do in in the first few months but then it will be a case of looking for more funding so that we can do more developments okay yeah. so still an, on, an ongoing project oh definitely yeah i think there's so much stuff that we can we can do and we're always looking for because if we do have people interacting with it, uh, ideally we want there to be no, new content. Because if children know the stories really well, then we need to be, yeah, every every six months or so at least putting a few new stories on there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the that's the plan. We just need some fun. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, I can't I can't see any questions 
in the chat, but I've put in the links to the iTunes download and the Android store download as well. So if people want to go and I can see someone had already downloaded it as the webinar went on um, and was Great. having a play around with it. Um, it does work on iPads as well. So if, yeah. you're, if your school has iPads, um, you'd be able to get it to work. I've got it running on my iPad here and it, it, it works really, really well. Um, does anyone have any questions that hasn't asked anything so far or mentioned anything? Just to let you know as well that you can, um, we've had a few schools just do like an institutional download and getting it all on all of the um, the iPads in the school. And because it's free, then it just gives everybody access in the school. Yeah, it kind of removes that barrier, doesn't it? Folks can just download it, download it freely. That's great. Well, we we got your contact details on the screen, Phoebe, that you shared earlier, and I'll pop them in the chat as well in case anyone wants to get in touch with you directly. Um, some really nice positive feedback you're getting in the chat there from folks as well, saying it looks amazing, it's fab. Um, so thank you very much for coming along to tell us all about Sound Stories today, and thanks for coming along um, to our webinar. We're we're back in a few weeks' time um, for another one of our Wednesday webinars with some folks from Widget to show us some of their new resources. So um, thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you soon. Good night. Bye.